So we're going to discuss partial reduction of alkynes, which is discussed in the alkenes and alkynes electrophilic addition reactions chapter. The complete reduction of a CC triple bond forms an alkane, whereas partial reduction of a CC triple bond forms an alkene. So let's look at an example of these types of reductions. So we've got a starting material here which contains both a carbon-carbon double bond of an alkene and a carbon-carbon triple bond of an alkyne. And if we react that with hydrogen and a catalyst, palladium on carbon, we can reduce both the double bond and the triple bond under these hydrogenolysis conditions to form this saturated system here. However, if we use a different catalyst, we can selectively now reduce the alkyne triple bond. If we use hydrogen and Lindlar's catalyst, which is described as a poison catalyst, we can selectively reduce the alkyne. We can convert it into an alkene. The other alkene remains intact. And interestingly, we can convert the alkyne stereoselectively into a Z alkene. If we want to convert the alkyne into an E alkene, we need to use a different reducing agent. And in this case, we would use sodium and liquid ammonia. The sodium and liquid ammonia selectively reacts with the carbon carbon triple bond to form an E alkene. Notice that the carbon carbon double bond in the starting material here is retained in the product. So now we have a way of converting alkynes into Z or E alkenes and let's have a look at the use of this in synthesis and we're going to look at some chemoselective reduction processes to show how the carbon carbon triple bond can be selectively reduced in the presence of other functional groups so in this starting material we've got a carbamate a primary alcohol and our carbon carbon triple bond of the alkyne and if we react that molecule with sodium and liquid ammonia as we would predict the alkyne is converted into an E alkene and you'll notice that the carbamate and the alcohol remain untouched. If we react the alkyne with hydrogen and Lindlar's catalyst we get a similar chemoselective transformation. It's only the alkyne that's reduced and in this case it's converted into a Z alkene. Let's look at some slightly more complicated starting materials. In this starting material, we have two different carbamate functional groups in orange and two different ester groups in red together with a carbon-carbon triple bond. If we react this complicated molecule here with hydrogen and Lindlar's catalyst, again we get a very chemoselective transformation. It's only the carbon-carbon triple bond that reacts, even though we've got this aromatic system here called a fluorine group, it's only this carbon-carbon triple bond that's reduced stereoselectively, as we would predict, to the Z alkene. And in this final example, we've got something slightly different going on. We've got reduction of two functional groups. So let's work through the functional groups first. We have a diol here. We have our alkyne. We have a functional group called a silyl ether. And finally, we have this benzyl ether. Here we have an ether group and this substituent is called a benzyl substituent. And when we reduce this molecule with sodium and liquid ammonia, as predicted, the carbon-carbon triple bond is converted into an E alkene. But you'll also note that the benzyl ether reacts. This bond is broken to give us a primary alcohol. You'll notice that the diol and the silyl ether remain unaffected under these conditions. So using sodium liquid ammonia, here we can do two things. We can reduce a carbon-carbon triple bond to an E alkene and also convert a benzyl ether into an alcohol. One very interesting question is, how can you determine whether the product of your reduction is an E alkene or a Z alkene? Well, one common and very popular way of assigning stereochemistry to alkenes is to use the 1H NMR spectrum and you look at values of coupling constants, which are the splitting values of signals. So in a doublet, it would be the distance between the two different lines in your doublet signal. And these are called J values. So let's have a look at an example of this. And we're going to look at 1-bromo-prop-1-ene, 
and we're going to look at both the Z and the E isomers of this compound. And we're going to look specifically at the signal for this hydrogen shown in blue and this hydrogen here shown in purple. And both of these signals are doublets. This hydrogen is split by the hydrogen on the neighboring carbon, so we would expect a doublet for this signal. Similarly, this hydrogen in purple is split by the hydrogen on the neighboring carbon atom, and so we get two doublets. When you look closely at the NMR spectra of these doublets, what you find is that the distance between the two lines in the doublets are different. So what we get for the Z isomer is we get a smaller coupling constant, 6.5 hertz. The distance between these two lines is relatively small. If we look at the E isomer now, and we measure the distance between the two lines and the doublet, you'll see it's larger, approximately twice the size of J value, 13 hertz. So by measuring the distance between the two lines and the doublet signals, we can determine whether we have a Z or whether we have an E alkene. And this is a very common and popular way for assigning the stereochemistry of alkenes.